A block of mass M1 and a block of mass M2 are connected via a massless string over a pulley in the shape of a solid disk. So solid disk, just a thought process here. Uh, that's going to be moment of inertia is one half m r squared, having a radius of this and a mass of that. The fixed wedge-shaped ramp makes an angle of theta, the co coefficient of kinetic friction er, for both blocks is uh, 0 0.36. Use 9.8 for gravity. All right, determine the acceleration of the two blocks under the magnitude of the acceleration. All right, so the blocks are going to fall downward. So we're going to have um, so gravity is going to be down this way. It's going to be force gravity, and I'm going to break that up into two components. I'm going to call this force gravity in the x direction, and I'm going to call this force gravity in the y direction. That's going to then give us a normal force going this way. A force normal. And we're going to have a force friction going up this direction, opposing the direction of motion. We're then going to have also a force tension pulling on the block going this way. This is going to be tension 2 because it's block 2. That's going to create on the pulley tension 2 going that direction, opposing it equal and opposite. We're then going to have, um, let's see here. Can I use gray? Will gray work? Maybe it'll work. Tension 1 going this way, tension 1 pulling this way, and then opposing that tension, we are going to have, again, force friction, and that's going to be um, calculated using force gravity and force normal. As you can see, I don't have a specific color associated with a specific force. I'm just saying different color, different force. Um, except for force gravity here when I decompose it. Those are actually all the same force. It's just that when I decompose force gravity at x and y, I just use different colors. Okay, really busy diagram. I don't mean to cause stress. Not a big deal. We got this. So we want to find the acceleration of blocks. This is this Atwood machine. We can do this when we're going to do this by doing a whole bunch of free body diagrams. So the sum of all forces is mass times acceleration. And if we look at the block number two, so I'm going to sum of all forces on block number two. I'm going to say down is positive. We're going to have force gravity in the x direction minus force friction minus tension two. And that's going to equal mass times acceleration, which is going to be mass two times acceleration. I'm just going to see acceleration here since they're all connected by a taut string, taut massless string, then the they're all going to move together. And so this is all going to be just one acceleration. Therefore, I'm not going to have some subscript noting this acceleration for that acceleration. It's all the same acceleration. So from there, uh, we probably want to get more specific about what actually is force gravity x. And I'm going to say that force gravity x is mg sine theta. Uh, we can do that using geometry. I don't because every time I try and do it with geometry, I make a mistake and I get the wrong answer. Um, I just memorized that when you have this angle on an inclined plane, the force that causes the block to slide will be sine, slide, sine. And that's just how I memorize mg sine theta is what causes the block to slide down the ramp. Force friction, that's going to be due to, that's going to be um, coefficient of friction, specifically kinetic because we're moving, times force normal. Uh, force normal, in this case, since there's only two forces in the y direction, uh, one down, one up, they're going to have to be equal and cancel each other out since there's no motion in the y direction. Um, and F, So that's going to be Fg. Force normal is going to be the same as Fgy, which is going to be mg cosine theta. And I just memorized that it's going to be the opposite of the Fgx. By opposite, I mean instead of sine, we have cosine. I don't know if those are actually considered opposites of each other. Probably not. I'm just going to go with it. So I'm going to move these off to the side slightly so I get more room to rewrite my equation. And so this is going to become mg sine theta minus mu, probably a little 
coefficient of kinetic friction, mg cosine theta minus tension two equals m two acceleration. All right, so that is our equation for the sum of all forces, our Newton's second law, our free body diagram of block number two. Now we're gonna do the same thing but block number one. So block number one, um, we only have two forces on it. We have tension one minus uh, force friction. And we're gonna decompose force friction similar to the um, other, to, to block two, except this time the theta, if we have a theta for this angle, it's gonna be zero, cosine of zero is one, and so it's gonna be um, force gravity equals force normal, so it's gonna be minus mu k mass gravity. And that's gonna equal mass one times acceleration. And I'm gonna rewrite that down here like this, just so I get it on its own line. And you'll see why later, why I'm being so uh, fastidious, I think that's the right word, attention to detail about how I line these up. All right, so now I'll do purple. Eh, that's not enough contrast. Yeah, kind of this light blue. We're going to do light blue. So we did do the second law, force equals ma for blocks one and two. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for the pulley. So this, though, instead of torque, uh, instead of forces, we're going to use torques. The sum of all torques equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. And so I'm going to have, I'm going to call this torque two going this direction. This is going to be torque one going that direction. And so this is going to be um, torque two minus torque one. I'm going to call torque two the positive direction because it's rotating towards tension two. And sidebar over here, torque, torque equals R cross F. And in this case, since the R is going to be from the center of the pulley outward and force is tangent to the pulley, the angle between R and F is going to be 90 degrees. The cross product is a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are. They are perfectly perpendicular. So torque in this case is just going to be R times F. And so I'm going to rewrite this as R tension two minus R tension one. And I'm going to rewrite that one more time as R tension two minus tension one. And then this thing going to kind of backtrack up here. I'm going to say that the sum of all torques is moment of inertia times alpha. We're going to do a little sidebar over here. Moment of inertia for a disc is one half mr squared. Um, that's just something I have memorized. You can look it up on a list of moments of inertia. Wikipedia has a great one. Yeah, adequate, good enough. And the relationship between, since there, I think they say no slipping, connected, block, mass of spring, pulley, they say, makes it blah, blah, blah. We're going to assume that there is no slipping between the string and the pulley, which means that the relationship x equals r theta, v equals r omega, a equals r alpha holds true. Specifically, we're going to look at the bottom one right here. Alpha equals r over alpha equals a over r. So this becomes uh, one half m r squared times a over r. Yes. This gives us, uh, let's see what we got going on here. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. So the uh, r's cancel and we have one half m r a. Pulling that down here, just get things all together. One half m r a. We can say, see that we still have an this is going to be mass pulley, so I'll put P there. 
Uh, we have a R on both sides, so that will then cancel as well. And we now have tension 2 minus tension 1 equals 1 half mass pulley times acceleration. And that's going to be the same acceleration of the other two equations. And this is the sum of all torques. All right, so lots of uh, writing, lots of equations, but at this point we can solve things. And I'm going to show you that I set these up in a way that was not coincidental and should make this easy to work with. So this is our first equation we had up on top due to the sum of all forces on number two. This is the equation we had um, just after that. So this is the equation we had for the sum of all forces on one. And I'm going to set it up like this so the equal signs line up. And then this is the equation we got from the pulley right there. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all the left sides. We're going to add up all the right sides. So we get um, mass, and these are mass twos. These are that's mass one. So mass two g sine of theta minus mu k m g cosine of theta minus tension two plus. Now we're going to do the second line plus tension one minus mu k m one g plus tension two minus tension one, that's line three, equals, I'm going to factor out an A, mass one plus mass two plus one half mass pulley. All right, so one thing we notice here is all the tensions cancel out. So we have negative tension two, positive tension two, positive tension one, negative tension one. And so the tensions, it's not that they don't matter, it's that we don't need to know them right now. So what we're going to solve for here is A. And so we're going to get acceleration equals everything here on the right. Uh, it's supposed to be mass 1. Um, I think we can factor out a G. So it'll be M2 sine of theta minus that M1 or M2. That's supposed to be M2. M2. Uh, no, we're going to do m mu k m2 cosine of theta minus mu k m1. Yep, yeah, that's 1, 2, 3. That's all we have on top. Divided by mass 1 plus mass 2 plus 1 half mass of the pulley. And if you look at this, this kind of seems reasonable. Because up top here, so you have force equals ma, that's just Newton's second law. Acceleration equals force divided by mass. And up here we have all the forces. We have the force due to gravity and we have the force due to friction. And on the bottom we have all the masses. We have the mass of the two weights along with the mass of the pulley. And so here we have 9.8 times mass 2. Now at this point I'm going to have I'm going to copy and paste this and move it up closer to the problem. That way I can just kind of look at the variables as I put them in. So mass 2, which is the heavy one, is going to be 6.5 times the sine of the angle. I think we said 30. 30 degrees, yep, 30 degrees, sine of 30, which is just one half, minus mu k, which we said was like 0.3 probably, 0 0.36, 0 0.36 times mass 2 again, which is still 6.5, uh, times the cosine of 30 degrees, probably should put a little degree symbol up there, minus 0 0.36 times mass 1, which is 2.5 divided by 6.5 plus 2.5. See, is that right? 6.5, 2.5, yep. Plus 1 half times the mass of the pulley. The mass of the pulley is 10. 
And that's pretty massive poorly. We should be able to plug this into a calculator then and get an answer. So we do 9.8 times the top fraction, which is 6.5 times sine of 30 degrees, minus 0.36 times 6.5 times cosine of, again, 30 degrees, minus 0.36 times 2.5. Let's make sure uh, 0.36 was actually the uh, friction. Yep. Divided by quantity, 6.5 plus 2.5 plus 0.5 times 10. And I get an answer. Hopefully we get an answer less than 9.8 because if we get it faster than gravity, then we obviously did something wrong. And it moves down pretty slow. I got an answer 0.22. 6 meters per second squared. So this is going to be the answer to part A. Um, yep, and now we're going to find the tensions real quick. So tension 1, so we're going to, to find tension 1, we're going to go back to our first equation. Do we want to go back to our first equation? We're going to, yeah, we're going to do tension 1 first. So tension 1, I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to come back down here. This will be part B. Uh, is there a part A? Did I miss the part A? Weird. No. I shouldn't overthink it. So tension 1 is that. Therefore, tension 1 equals mass 1 times acceleration plus mu k g which is mass 1 I think it was 2.5 2.5 we do 2.5 times acceleration which we decided was 0.226 plus 0.36 because that is a coefficient of friction times gravity which we decided was 9.8 kinda wanna use 9.81 just because I was told not to. Um, put this into a calculator and I get 2.5 times 0.226 plus 0.36 times 9.8 and I get a tension of 9.385 newtons. That's going to be tension 1. Now for tension 2, we can do either equation, either the top equation or our third equation down here. I'm going to use our third equation down here just because I don't want to put in sines and cosines. If I was a better person, I would do both and make sure I get the same answer. I am not. So, and maybe it's nice to live in denial and not realize how much I am in error. At some point, being done is, and wrong is more enjoyable than being correct, but doing twice the work. Mm. Probably not a good philosophy in life, though it does have its advantages. All right, one half times mass of the pulley. Mass of the pulley is 10, 10 kilograms times our acceleration. Our acceleration we already decided was, I guess, 0 0.226, 0 0.226. We already found tension one. That was 9.385. And it kind of seems reasonable that tension 2 would be more than tension 1 because tension 2 is pulling both the pulley and the block on top. So 0 0.5 times 10 times 0.226 plus 9.385. And I get an answer of 10.515 newtons. That's going to be tension 2. All right. Let's backtrack because we did a ton of work on this one. So first thing we did, we have, I think it's basically called like an Atwood machine, where you basically have two blocks and a pulley, or two blocks and basically hanging each, hanging on each side, um, creating forces. So this is uh, Newton's second law, free body diagrams. The way you approach this problem is you draw a free body diagram for each of them. I know, looks confusing, don't be intimidated. 
um, you draw your first free body diagram, you write an equation up for it. Right? So over the first block, we had force gravity x pulling it down, but we also had force friction and tension 2 pulling it up the slope. And the sum of all forces is going to be mass times acceleration. We do that for block 2, we do the same thing for block 1, and then we do the rotational part to account for the pulley. So the pulley, um, instead of forces, we're going to look at in terms of torques, where torque is R cross F. And so it's going to be torque 2 minus torque 1. Um, the way I think of the signs, the way the signs are different, is because I think of it in terms of clockwise torque and counterclockwise torque. And that's going to equal the rotational equivalent or uh, rotational analogy of mass times acceleration, which is moment of inertia times angular acceleration. We then convert the moment of inertia and angular acceleration into their linear equivalents, uh, one half mr squared for a disk, for a pulley that's the shape of a solid disk. And then um, alpha is similar to uh, linear acceleration divided by radius. We then simplify it and we now have three equations and three unknowns. And at this point, this is algebra, which is easier said than done. But I set everything up so that the accelerations were on one side, the torques and forces, well, the forces are all on the other side. And when we just literally add up the left side of the equations and the right side of the equations, things cancel out nicely and we get acceleration. Once we have acceleration, we can go back to our original equation and we use that to find the tensions, tension one and tension two. This is about as difficult as this kind of problem is going to get. Uh, it's good to kind of know this pattern so you can kind of quickly go through it. And we come across this question on a timed evolution, which is a good chance you will. You'll be able to move through it in a timely uh, manner and probably get most of the points. So that is kind of the goal for this one. So I know I covered a lot. Hope that helped. See you on the next problem.